For the directions, just uh, choose the letter of the best answer. Pause the video if you need more time and some helpful tips. You may want to practice answering already on a bubble sheet using a Mongol 2 pencil. You can get bubble sheets online. There are so many free bubble sheets that are available. You can download them and print. Para pagdating sa actual exam, you'll be uh, more comfortable now in shading and you won't feel awkward or uncomfortable. For question number one, which of the following statements is true about the shape of the Earth? A. The Earth is a perfect sphere. B. The Earth's tilt affects the shape of the Earth. C. The Earth slightly bulges at the equator. D. The Earth's shape is affected by the tides. Go. The correct answer is letter C. So remember that the Earth slightly bulges at the equator and is actually flattened or squashed at the poles. So yung tawag sa shape na ito ay oblate spheroid. Remember yung Earth science lesson natin, this means that the shape of the Earth is not a perfect sphere. Alright? So letter A is incorrect. And letter B, the Earth's tilt does not really affect the shape of the Earth. It's the uh, rotation of the Earth which causes the equator to uh, somehow bulge. And also the Earth's shape is not affected by the tides. The first question was under Earth science. Question number two is under biology. So the question is, which of the following differentiates eukaryotic cells from prokaryotic cells? A. Multicellular. B. Presence of genetic material. C. Presence of cilia and flagella. D. Presence of membrane-bound organelles. Go. One of the difference of eukaryotic cells from prokaryotic cells is that eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles such as nucleus, such as the mitochondria, such as the lysosomes, and so on. Whereas for um, prokaryotic cells, they don't have membrane-bound organelles. Letter A is incorrect because some eukaryotic cells are unicellular like prokaryotic cells. Both eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells have genetic material and some eukaryotic cells may have flagella, they may have cilia, and some prokaryotic cells may also have those uh, structures. Okay. For the third question, an example of a metamorphic rock is marble. So marami nito sa romblon. The question is, which of the following describes the formation of metamorphic rocks? A. They are formed due to heat and pressure. B. They are formed due to the heat in the Earth's interior. Letter C. They are formed solely from the pressure within the Earth. Letter D. They are formed from the settling and the compaction of sediments. 5 seconds. The correct answer is letter A. Metamorphic rocks are formed due to heat and pressure. For letter B, it's incorrect because this is the process of formation for igneous rock. So igneous rocks are due to heat. Whereas for letter D, that's also incorrect because this would refer to the formation of sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks are due to the settling, the deposition, and the compaction of sediments. Question number four. Which of the following part of the cell is responsible for giving cells their shape? A cytoskeleton, B, vacuoles, C, plasma membrane, D, endoplasmic reticulum. Go! Alright, the correct answer is letter A, cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton gives a cell its shape, it gives support and facilitates uh, movement of the cell through three of the cytoskeleton's main components like uh, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, microtubules. Actually, the term cytoskeleton will already give us a clue because cyto means cell and we are familiar with the word skeleton like uh, our skeletal system which gives shape to our bodies. So letter A is the answer. Letter B, vacuoles, to some extent would also give shape to the cell. They are also used for storing water and solutes but the better answer is letter A. Alright, we are now with question number 5. Question number 5 goes, Mimosa pudica, locally known as makahiya, closes its leaves when touched or agitated. Which manifestation of life is shown by the plant Mimosa pudica? Letter A. Ability to grow. Letter B. Ability to reproduce. C. Ability to respond to stimuli. And D. Ability to adapt to the environment. Go.
The correct answer is letter C, ability to respond to stimuli. So this is again under biology. Kapag biology, inaaral natin yung mga bagay na may buhay like plants, animals, bacteria. So paano nga ba natin malalaman kung ang isang bagay ay may buhay? We have to recall the what we call the manifestations of life. Pag sabihin manifestations of life, ibig sabihin nito signs of life. And these are growth, development, reproduction. For instance, yung tao lumalaki siya from a baby, nagiging adult. And at some point, Um, humans become capable of reproducing. Other manifestations of life include the ability to metabolize. Yung mga pagkain na kinakain natin, nakoconvert natin sila to energy. Another manifestation of life is homeostasis. Like pag masyadong mainit, nagpapawis tayo para malamigan yung skin or katawan natin. And another manifestation of life is uh, response to stimuli as shown by the makahiya plant. So when we touch its leaves, it closes. So it responds to the stimulus of touch. Question number six. Rincodon typus, known as the whale shark or butanding, is considered as the largest fish in the sea. It can weigh up to 11,800 kilograms. The question is, how much does it weigh in pounds? So A, 2,596 pounds. B, 5,364 pounds. C, 18,172 pounds. Letter D, 25,960 pounds. So I'll give you about a minute for this, okay? Alright, so the correct answer is letter D, 25,960 pounds. So here we use the conversion factor, 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds to get the equivalent of 11,800 kilograms in pounds. So paano ba yung gagawin natin dito? We just multiply 11,800 kilograms times 2.2 pounds over 1 kilogram. Kailangan natin ilagay si uh, kilogram sa denominator para mag-cancel out si kilogram. So kilogram here divided by kilogram is just equal to 1, leaving us with only pounds. Alright? And we just do the arithmetic. 11,800 times 2.2 divided by 1 is equal to 25,960 pounds. So for question number seven, a mixture of soil and water may be separated into its components by A. Decantation B. Evaporation C. Electrophoresis and letter D. Chromatography Go! The correct answer is letter A. Decanting or decantation is a process used to separate components of mixtures. So, isa ito sa pinakamadali na process sa pagsa-separate ng mixtures. Sa decantation, we just allow the mixture to settle. Ibig sabihin, papabayaan lang natin siya sa isang gilid. We can also use decantation for separating two immiscible liquids like uh, water and oil. Eventually, the oil will stay on top being less dense and the water by gravity will go to the bottom of the mixture. Okay? We're halfway through, guys. For question number eight, the formation of clouds is part of the water cycle. What physical change is shown by the formation of clouds? A. Clouds are formed in the process of sublimation. B. Liquid water evaporates and turns into water vapor. C. Water vapor condenses to form tiny water droplets. And letter D. Clouds are formed through deposition prior to precipitation. Go! The correct answer is letter C. So the physical change that we see in the formation of clouds is condensation, which is the change from gas to liquids. So ano ba yung nangyayari in the formation of clouds? Clouds are formed when the warm and moist air rises in the atmosphere, and then the water vapor in the air condenses to form tiny water droplets, which we see as clouds. Ngayon, pag masyado na malaki yung water droplets na ito, these droplets then fall to the ground, and that's known as precipitation. Let's go now to question number 9. NaCl or sodium chloride is a salt. The sodium and chlorine atoms are held by A. 
A covalent bond B. An ionic bond C. A double bond and letter D. A metallic bond The correct answer here is letter B. So, sodium or Na, due to its properties being a metal, if you check the periodic table, it's on the left side. It, um, sodium loses an electron. And on the other hand, chlorine or Cl being a nonmetal would tend to accept an electron. So, yung effect nito dahil si sodium nag lose ng electron, magiging positively charged siya. Si chlorine naman, since tumanggap siya, ng isang electron magiging negatively charged siya. The positive sodium now and the negative chlorine called chloride will be attracted to each other through an electrostatic force and this bond is known as ionic bond. On the other hand, for letter A, covalent bond, covalent bonds are due to the sharing of electrons between two non-metallic atoms like oxygen atoms. Alright, let's now go to question number 10 and let's try some physics stuff. A train moves 5 kilometers north, turned east, and moved 4 kilometers. Finally, it turned southward and moved another 5 kilometers. What is the displacement of the train? A. 1 kilometer. B. 4 kilometers. C. 5 kilometers. And letter D. 14 kilometers. Go. The correct answer is letter... B. 4 kilometers. So recall the concepts of distance versus displacement. Again, distance is a scalar quantity and distance refers to how much ground an object has covered during its motion. Whereas displacement naman is a vector quantity which refers to how far is the object from its initial position. So dito makikita natin that the train covered 5 kilometers and then 4 kilometers and another 5 kilometers for a total of 14 kilometers. So this figure, the 14 kilometers, refers to the distance. Yung displacement ay yung overall change in the position of the object. And here, since the train moved 5 kilometers pataas, 4 kilometers pa kanan, and then 5 kilometers pa baba ulit, the displacement thus is only 4 kilometers. Okay? Ito yung net movement niya. It's only 4 kilometers. Question number 11. A student wishes to find the density of an irregular piece of rock. How will she find the volume? The correct answer is letter D. We use the water displacement method. In this method, we take note of the initial volume of the liquid, then we place the irregularly shaped object and get the final volume of the liquid. Now, to get um, the volume of the object, we just subtract the final volume of the liquid with the initial volume so that this difference will be the volume of your object, like a piece of rock. Okay. And if we have a small piece of rock, we can use a graduated cylinder to determine its volume. For regularly shaped objects, we just multiply the length with its width and height to get the volume. Question number 12. What energy transformation happens in an LPG-fueled oven? A. Chemical to sound. B. Chemical to light and thermal. C. Potential energy to chemical and thermal. And letter D. Electrical to mechanical and thermal. Go. The correct answer is letter B, from chemical energy to light and thermal energy. So, pwede rin tanungin ano yung mga energy transformations that happen in a certain situation. For instance, when you operate an electric fan, ano yung mga energy changes na makikita natin. So, when you plug an electric fan, electricity flows, it's in the form of electrical energy, and this energy is then converted to mechanical energy, and some of it are dissipated as thermal energy. Let's go to question number 13. Which of the following does not correctly describe a simple machine? Again, we're looking for a statement which does not describe a simple machine. A. It increases the amount of work done. B. It multiplies the amount of force applied. C. It changes the direction of the force. And D. It increases the distance at which force is applied. Go. The correct answer is letter A. So, ancient people invented simple machines to help them do work. And these simple machines are um, lever, the inclined plane, the pulley, 
the screws, the wedge which we see in our everyday lives. So a machine helps doing work easier by either changing the direction of the force or increasing the magnitude of a force or increasing the distance or speed of a force. But remember, remember that using a machine does not mean that you do less work. So here letter A is incorrect. A machine does not increase the amount of work done. Question number 14. A scientist would like to know the effects of the metal iron on the growth of the mice brain. He observed newborn mice for four weeks. In this experiment, what is the dependent variable? A. The size of the cage of the mice. B. The quality and quantity of diet. C. The growth of the mice's brain. And D. The concentration of iron ions in the water. The correct answer is letter C, the growth of the mice's brain. So that is the dependent variable. Whereas for the independent variable, this is the variable that you manipulate. And uh, the independent variable here would be the presence or the introduction of the metal iron on the body of the mice. And for the other variables, we have to keep them the same in both the experimental setup and the control setup so that we can know if there's an effect of the independent variable to the dependent variable. So we have to make sure that the size of the cage is the same for both the experimental and the control setups. We need to make sure that the quality and the quantity of diet is the same for both setups as well. And for our last question, this is question number 15. A 40 kilogram figure skater is pushed with a force of 180 newtons. What is the acceleration of the figure skater? A. 4.5 meter per second squared. B. 0 0.2 meters per second squared. Letter C. 9.8 meters per second squared. And letter D. 9.0 meters per second squared. Go! Alright, so that's the last question and the correct answer here is letter A, 4.5 meter per second squared. So recall um, in our uh, lesson on uh, loss of motion, force is equal to mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. So to get the acceleration, we just divide the force that was applied with the mass of the object. So here, the force is 180 newtons divided by the mass, which is 40 kilograms. So we get 4.5 meters per second squared. So guys, how did you fare in our practice exam? <laughs> Let me know of your scores by commenting below. If you got 15 out of 15, that's awesome. 11 to 14, that's still a great job. For others, you can still increase your scores. So uh, there, if you liked the video I prepared, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. You may also share this video with your boyfriend or girlfriend. For questions, just comment below. Thank you all for watching. 